Hey guys, Mike Builds. Welcome back to another video. Today we're going to be taking a look at and reviewing this Yolik Wall Volt 100 amp hour lithium iron phosphate battery. It doesn't look like any other batteries we reviewed, so I was kind of anxious to get my hands on one of these. And as you can see right here, it says it has Bluetooth 5.0. So off the bat, you do get some cool features like that. The first thing that struck me kind of weird with this battery that I've never seen is the box. It's almost like a crate and it looks like there's a tape line up here. So we're gonna go ahead and crack this thing open, but I just thought that was interesting. And then you guys will see once we get this thing open, the battery itself is also very interesting. And I figured since I've done so many other 100 amp hour batteries, I'm trying to find different kinds of batteries I really haven't seen too much. Here's a sneak peek at the battery. Looks like we got some handles on the side here. And they have their own custom packaging just for this battery. All right, so here's the battery itself. So as you can see, it almost has the shape of a lead acid battery. It's got this interesting looking case. It's actually got terminals here. It's just like you would have on a lead acid battery where you put a battery clamp. So I think they're aiming this toward like the trolling motor market where you can just connect your battery leads and go because I think most people with inverters and things like that are just gonna use normal battery posts. And yeah, actually, if you look up here, it is threaded and it comes with a set of bolts as well. So you would just screw your battery terminal down right here, put these little caps back on. All right, so there's some specs right here. They rate the cycle life at 4,500 charge cycles, 1,280 watt hours, 100 amp hours. The case is really nice. You got these little carrying handles here. On the top here, it looks like you have a button to turn it on. Also, I think when we go to take this apart, it looks like there's screws on the perimeter of the lid. So it should be pretty easy to open this thing up. I'm very curious to see what's inside. As far as the dimensions of the battery, it is 13 inches long, eight and a half inches wide eight inches tall like you guys have already seen you get the little terminals and you also get this little manual pretty nice it's in full color talks more about the build of the battery brand new grade a cells polymer flame retardant shell it has a heating pad it looks like we're gonna go ahead and download the app so we can connect to this thing let's see don't put it upside down max continuous discharge they rate this at is 100 amps we're definitely gonna test that kind of gives you some of the uses you would use this for very nice that's really it, just all generic information about the battery itself. As of the making of this video, right now you can actually get this battery on Amazon for $269, which in my opinion is gonna put this more in the premium section of battery pricing. So we're gonna fully recharge this thing, then we're gonna do a discharge test, see how many amp hours we get out of it. Then we're gonna put our discharge load tester on it using an inverter and a heater, and we're gonna see how many amps we can pull out of the battery before the BMS shuts down, if it shuts down. Then we're gonna take this thing apart, take a look on the inside, try to identify the cells, the BMS, and overall judge together the build quality of the battery and see if it's worth the price tag that the battery cost. I went ahead and downloaded the app. It's literally called Unique Hub. So we're gonna go ahead and open that up. We're gonna hit connect. Never mind. it does want us to make an account. Let me figure this out real quick. All right, unfortunately, you do have to make an account. It was very easy and it didn't ask for really any information besides an email. Personally, I don't like that. I wanna be able to just connect to the battery without having to worry about that. Anyways, we're gonna go ahead and connect to the battery and it picked it up right away. So it's showing it's at 25% state of charge. It shows the heater if it's in standby or if it's working. It says no heating right now. You can force start it, I guess, if maybe the battery's BMS trip for some reason. There's nothing really else on this page. We're gonna to go to the next page. All right, very nice. It's showing all of our cell voltages. I really like to see that. It shows if you have any fault codes, the temperature of the battery. These look like a bunch of statuses. Maybe it says uh, a lot of them say like no discharge state, no charge state, no full charge state, interesting like that. Not really sure what that means. I don't know if you can click on them or not, nope. And that's really it, pretty basic. Now when you're using it, it is gonna show total amperage and total power, so that's good. We're gonna go ahead and throw our 12 volt battery charger on this thing to go ahead and get this thing fully charged so we can start our capacity test. All right, we got this thing charging. So we got our Uleaky battery fully recharged. I went ahead and set up our capacity meter to reflect 100 amp hours, 100% state of charge. Right here where it says total amp hours, that's gonna be the final capacity number of the battery. We're gonna put a 0.2 C load on the battery, which is gonna be 20 amps. We're gonna be using my Sun Gold Power 3000 watt 12 volt inverter. So we're gonna kick that on. We're gonna turn our charge verter on to get our 20 amp load. There we go, about 21 amps. We're gonna let this thing run until the battery shuts off and we'll see what the final number is. The capacity test on our Uleaky battery just finished and we got 100.3. So normally I like to see higher than 100, although it is technically rated at 100 amp hours. Generally when the cells are new, you're gonna get the most capacity. So my biggest worry is that once this thing starts to age, it's gonna quickly go below 100, so not really sure about that, but I guess it did technically pass. Now we're gonna do the high current discharge test on the Uleaky battery. So I went ahead and fully recharged the battery. We have it reconnected to the inverter just like we did before, and we're gonna plug in a 1500 watt space heater that's gonna put about 100 and change amps on it, and we're gonna see if the high current protection will work. So we're pulling about 130 amps. I'm gonna let the load run like that for a second. Then we're gonna plug in another load to load the system up more. All right, we're getting close to 200 amps. The battery is not shutting off yet. We're at 200 amps. 
Looks like we stabilize at about 213 amps. That's 2,580 watt we are pulling from this battery. Now to be fair, the voltage is very stable. Personally, I would never pull that much power from one battery. Nope. There it went. It actually just shut down. So it does have a working high current protection. Either that or we thermally tripped it, but nothing feels hot. So more than likely that was the high current protection kicking in. So it does work. All right, now we're gonna go ahead and take the battery apart. Hopefully it'll be easy because there's screws holding on this lid and we're gonna see what's inside this thing. All right, I got all the screws out. Let's see if this just pops off. Cause that'd be real easy if it did. Okay, it doesn't. Hammer and screwdriver time it is. Okay, this looks cool. Let me uh, get it on the counter and show you guys. All right, now I gotta separate the terminals somehow. Looks like there's some 10 millimeter bolts. Let me go get a wrench and get those off real quick so I can get the cover off. And you can kind of see in here, we have these large bus bars that directly mount to the terminal. So we have to get those off in order to get the cover off. Just taking a quick peek inside this thing, it looks completely different than any battery I've ever seen before. And look, it's even got a little fan on there. Here's the bottom side of the cover. You have a lot of webbing here that's gonna give that a lot of strength. Your main terminals look really, really nice. This is gonna be your main power switch button that's on the top right here. And then if you look closely, there's two little contact pads right here. They look like little metal pads. And it looks like they're CAN wires because what it says there is CAN L and CAN H. That's CAN low and CAN high. So I wonder if there's a way this thing can communicate with some sort of CAN module that you connect to this, or maybe that's how they program it at the factory. They just put a contactor on there with some sort of a device that can program the BMS. Not really sure on that. The one thing I will say that I do not like about this terminal design is the negative and the positive are not very clearly labeled. They need to be painted or brightly colored because it's very easy if you're not paying attention to reverse the polarity. Some people may not like the actual terminal design like this, but I believe they went like that to make it very easy to connect it to existing systems that are already using lead acid batteries because all the lead acid battery terminals are like this, but they are very nice knurled terminals. So you will get a good connection there. And obviously they're still threaded at the top. So you can still put your normal bolt style connector. But if you're gonna do that, you might wanna put some heat shrink or something on there just to prevent any short circuits. But that all looks really nice. So here's a good look inside the battery. We have our large BMS. We have bus bars connecting the BMS from the battery to the main negative. And then we have a bus bar going to the main positive down there. Each main negative and main positive connection actually has a temperature sensor directly bolted to the terminal. So this thing can actually sense if you have a bad connection and the terminals get really hot. These little temperature sensors right here will detect that and actually shut the battery down, I would assume. Never seen that before, it's pretty cool. I've never seen the style BMS before so if you guys have leave a comment and let me know what you guys think about it it's got a lot of stuff on it going on that's probably your Bluetooth antenna right there these are the connections for the switch on the lid now I'm gonna try to get this off so I'm gonna disconnect the bus bar here disconnect the bus bar here all these electrical connections that way we can unbolt this metal plate with these four screws at each corner try to lift this out so we can get a better look at the cells themselves at right, this top plate is loose so we can kind of lift that up and take a peek inside so there's a main plastic cover covering the battery itself but if you look down there there's like some extruded aluminum bits that are actually bolted into the case and they can also see the plastic shipping strap style compression straps. So I assume that's gonna help hold everything together. There's a manufacturing date on that battery. It says 24, 10, 14. I'm gonna try to get that plastic cover off so we can take a better look at the cells. We have very nice laser welded, massive laser welds. These are really big compared to what we normally see in a battery like this. And the entire battery is encased in like a plastic shell. So I'm not gonna be able to look at the QR codes, unfortunately. So that's a balance wire. This is a balance wire. That's a temperature sensor and they directly welded it to the actual bus bar to keep track of the temperature of that. There's actually another one on the other side over here as well. So overall, the build quality is pretty nice. I'm actually really surprised. I don't know what I was expecting, but I was not expecting this. Unfortunately, there's not really any way to further disassemble this without completely tearing the whole battery apart. So this is as far as I'm gonna go in this video, but if you guys really, really, really want me to tear it down further, maybe in another video we can do that. But you can kind of see what's going on for the most part. And honestly, this is very nice construction and I've never seen this before. This battery is constructed and built completely different than any battery we've tested on the channel. And if you guys have been watching the channel for a while, you guys have known we've reviewed a ton of batteries and none of them have ever looked like this. No wires at all. You have nothing but bus bars. The only wires you have are for sensors and the actual power to the BMS itself. And instead of a heat sink, you get a little fan and it looks like that's what's gonna be on the MOSFETs in order to cool the MOSFETs down when you're transferring a lot of current. And then here's the model number and the name of the BMS. It says Eureka. So there's all the info on the BMS. If anybody has any information on that, let me know in the comments. Never seen that before. 
All right, guys, that's gonna conclude us testing and looking at this Uliki battery. The Uliki battery is very unique. As you guys saw, the build quality is very interesting and it seemed to pass all our tests. So let me know what you guys think about this in the comments. It's very different battery than what's on the market right now. So I think they're trying something new and different. And I guess only time will tell if this thing will actually hold up and if this will catch on more or if this style is just kind of a niche that only certain people are gonna wanna buy. But either way, I'd love to hear you guys' thoughts in the comments. Thank y'all so much for watching and I'll see you on the next one.